Hello, everybody. <laughs> we have some carolers here. And a happy new year. <laughs> wow, this is beautiful. Uh, they're not the best singers, <laughs> but they try. That's what's important in the holiday season. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy if, holidays. Happy holidays. For those of you who prefer that. If you listen to that episode in the summer or at any other time, just a happy pretend day. It's, pretend it's Christmas time. Um, and happy Hanukkah to those who celebrate Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. um, and any other religions or holidays around this time yeah. that you might celebrate. Yes. Happy, happy day to you. And also happy new year, basically, in the sense Almost, that yeah. 2020 is ending soon or is already over. If you're listening to this late. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and yeah, it's been a it's been a weird, rough year. But with some positives, which we will get into right. because we want to try to keep this episode light right. and joyful because we all need it right now. And it's also Christmas, so... We think that's the best thing to do right now. That's true. And also, uh, thank you for everyone who's reaching out. Um, we love to hear stories how you like maybe moved somewhere or you even like having a similar story that we do. And and if you're one of those people who feels you connect to that and you want to reach out, but you're not sure if you should, Please you should. Yeah. Because we actually get a lot of messages from yeah. people who listen to our podcast and then are like, oh, that's really cool. I'm also from the US right, or I'm right. from Canada or I'm from wherever. And I'm in a long distance relationship. And we ended up having really nice conversations and we've made some friends from it. Right. So, And also if there is like any questions or topic suggestions or something like that, you can totally hit us up with that too. You can send us a message and we can discuss the, the question on the podcast. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's always a possibility and we won't make fun of you. You know, we forgot to say that this is a brand new episode of Translating Love. Oh, yeah, this is a brand new episode <laughs> of Translating Love with me, Wifi. <laughs> and me, Danny. Um, yeah, today is Christmas. We Christmas said that Day. already. <laughs> no, but, but it's weird because Christmas in Austria is the 24th. So, yeah. Weihnachten or... Uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Weihnachtsabend. Mm -hmm, which is Christmas night. Eve, Christmas night, yeah. Christmas Eve. Yeah, but it's not really Eve. Evening. Yeah, I guess evening, yeah. Yeah, Christmas Eve. But, I but, I mean, I think for some people it is that way in the U.S. too. There are some people who celebrate it more on the 24th and the 25th. From my experience, I know more people who celebrate it on the 25th. We still mm -hmm. celebrate on the 24th, but the 24th is more... Like, I don't know, maybe you have like a family party or something mm -hmm. or like that's the big family gathering or whatever it might be. So we basically have two days. But for us, like Christmas Day is it's Christmas. The actual Christmas. Yeah. The thing is, I like the idea of having running down the stairs oh, in the morning of the 25th the and, and uh, ra like just plowing through all the <laughs> presents and and oh we never did it quickly though that's not allowed no i know it's not allowed you have to but enjoy you it. know in the movies it's always like yeah. that um and i like the idea but at the same time i i love the the tradition we have here where it's the evening of the 24th and mm -hmm. you eat together um and you maybe have someone over we used to have grandma over a lot um since she is alone for yeah. the last couple of, I don't know, I think it's already 20 years that she's wow. been alone. Um, and yeah, or yeah, my sister or someone else. And we just celebrated in like this small circle. Well, let's, had... since you're basically going into it, we yeah, wanted to say that we uh, want to just talk about like our family right. traditions. Right. Um, and like things that are, are special to us at Christmas time individually and all of that. So right. you can keep going. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's. For me, it's always it. It was always like this really special evening or or afternoon or night where you just had like dinner together. And um, of course, when you were a child or when I was a child, it was more special because you know I was super excited to mm -hmm. get presents and and finally get to the important part. But yeah. now it's more the sitting together and eating and just talking and having fun. And weirdly, in the last couple of years, there's also this tradition that we just go over to our neighbors, to our favorite neighbors, mm -hmm. um, and just have a bunch of drinks. Then and come Boyfie home. And and I are not really drinkers. No, we don't drink at all. I mean, we both had like our party days and then we kind of grew out of it kind of fairly early compared to other right, people grow right, out of it. Right. 
Um, I mean, nothing against drinking, but we don't drink at all usually. We just don't. I maybe like once or twice a year for like Christmas or like our birthday or something, but otherwise not really. Wow. Um, And even then, I love going to the neighbors. But yeah, we go over there and we have some drinks, and (laughs) we come. We don't. We don't like drink until we fall over, but we drink so we're like. I mean, there was one year. I know it was pretty heavily, but but it's still to an extent where you can still have a nice Christmas. So we then we come back and then we uh, cook dinner together and we sit and and maybe sing some songs and then we have like this little gift uh hour where we just um go through all the gifts like each each person can pick one and can hand it to the person Mm -hmm. who gets it and then we all stare at the person (laughs) without any like i don't know can't wait until we Mm -hmm. we get one but yeah it's a fun time and then usually after the whole thing we either watch something Christmas like related, a Christmas movie, yeah. And for me, it's most of the time uh, Mr. Bean. Yes. Merry Christmas, Mr. Bean. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Mr. Bean, shame on you. You should totally check it out. It's on. <laughs> it's on Inst- um, YouTube. And for those who maybe aren't familiar with British humor, because it's very dry and it's very. I don't even know how, how you, you would to, describe it. You have to like the character. But, yeah, but you also need to give it time. Yeah. It's not necessarily that you're going to love it the first time you mm, watch it. True. But if you watch a couple episodes of Mr. Bean or go to YouTube and just search up the church, church. scene. Oh, man. That's a good one. Good Lord. But yeah, and then we usually go over to my uh, aunt's house since they're right next to us. and That's on the 25th, though. No, 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 no. At night, we usually awesome. go over and, mm-hmm. and like just maybe have a glass of, of champagne or something. And usually then we either go to the uh, midnight church, the, mm-hmm. the what midnight is it called? Midnight mass. The midnight mass. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a huge church goer. I'm not either. And um, yeah, let's not talk about religion. We're just, we're not religious people, but but we like to go to the Midnight yes, Mass like, with his I, grandmother. I like to and... consider myself spiritual Me too. in a way, but not really religious. But yeah, then we go over there because it's also kind of a tradition. It's really nice. You it's like, nice it's to go with really your grandmother. It's dark there and, and candles and the singing. But yeah, that's not going to happen this year. Um, And that's it. And that's the whole night. And then usually on the 25th and 26th, it's just family days. Yeah, here it's um, like, it's super... man, Christmas, I feel like, takes an entire week. And by the end of it, you're just so exhausted. Yeah, after three days of celebrating, eating a lot, um, and just having the same talks, basically, it gets a little dry. And the, the weird thing is, I love that to this year, it's not Me that too. way. And it's <laughs> weird to me that people still need to do it or feel... Like they have to. Yeah. I mean, I get that if you're lonely, if you're alone at home, you kind of look forward to the time because you sure. finally see family again. But at the same time, I'm dre- I'm so glad that I don't have to find an excuse this yeah. year because it's just going to be a really low key Christmas. And oh, it's I mean, I so think nice. so often we feel obligated to do so much at Christmas, and right. we don't let ourselves like we don't really listen to what we actually need. And because we're like, oh, it's Christmas and we have to do this. We have to meet these people. And I think it, that's why people get so stressed at Christmas time. I mean, e- uh, even before that. Even be- well, sure, even before, before that. shopping, yeah. getting all the stuff, getting the presents together, thinking of that, thinking of this. But but I think it's kind of nice this year, too. I mean, sure, it's nice to see family and sure, it's nice to do all this. But I also, I'm one of those people, I didn't used to be like this, but. Over the years, I've become more of like, I don't really care if we celebrate Christmas on Christmas or like my birthday on my birthday. Mm. It can be a week later. It can be three weeks later. Who cares? As long as you get to be with the people that you love. And so I'm all for like, let's just do Christmas in July and do Christmas presents in July and have a tree and, you know, sing Christmas carols with family because why not? I mean. I mean, I couldn't do that, but the cookies I could do. Um, (laughs) But yeah, that's Christmas for me. But your Christmas is a little different usually. Like, Mine's different. How was yours? In- I I love Christmas time. I mean, as a kid, um, we have this tradition. I mean, I've broken the tradition since because I think part of it is since mo- I mean, it's all been since I moved here. I broke a lot of my traditions um, or rules, I should say, because we had this rule that we didn't watch Christmas movies until Christmas Eve, and Christmas Eve was spent watching Christmas movies but together. Why? It's the f- I don't know. I mean, usually I'm not a huge advocate for Christmas movies, but this year, especially, I don't know. It yeah, gets we've me been kind watching of, so many. 
kind of gets me in the spirit a little more. No, but that's for us. It was so fun to like watch our. We always watched the same ones. We had our go tos like Charlie Brown Christmas, The Grinch, both mm. the animated and the real life. Um, the what else did we watch? Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Elf, when that came out, that mm. was a big one. You know, a Christmas story, some classics. Mm. And it was always something that you so much looked forward to because you're like, oh, Christmas Eve, that's the day we make a bunch of popcorn, we make cookies, we have hot cocoa, we have mm. fudge from my grandmother. God bless her. She makes the made the best fudge in the world. Um, Whatever it is. I know. He doesn't know what fudge is, and I'm making it this year, and I'm very excited. I will report back if I liked it. <laughs> um. That so we would spend Christmas Eve watching Christmas movies, staying up super late, watching stuff, and then we'd go to bed, and that was the best part was waking up in the morning, and we also had a rule in my but family that we didn't- Was it super hard to sleep that night? So hard. That's what, that, that that's the only thing so I- So hard. I don't like about that, because, I mean, nowadays I don't care, but, but even then, I don't know, like as a kid, but I would see, not be able to sleep. The funny thing is I see it exactly the opposite as you because I see it as I, as a kid, could not wake up on the 24th and have to wait the entire day mm -hmm. for presents. Oh. Because then you're awake. The thing is, the, thing is, the whole but day. But you have, there's so much to do. Usually you, there's still some Christmas shopping going on either yeah, in the morning. Yeah, but as a kid, there's, there's not that. But there is preparation. That. Usually, usually when I was a kid, at least, we had white Christmas every year. So we spent the whole day either outside sledding or it's maybe so going fun. through the woods with my dad, with my family, stuff, stuff like that. And there was, you know, there was so much, that the day was so filled that it just passed. Sure. And usually as a kid, you know, you start, they start cooking at like yeah. three, four, and but then I, you eat at five. And I also really like the whole go not being able to sleep. I mean, you can sleep eventually. It takes a while to fall asleep. But the thing mm. is, as a kid, you're so excited because you think you might see Santa. Like, you, you know that he's coming. Mm. And you're, I think it's so lovely. And if you put out milk and cookies, which we never really did, I don't think. But some people put out milk and cookies for Santa mm. and then Santa comes and eats them and drinks the milk. <laughs> and it's just like such a joy, I think, for kids to wake up to that kind of thing. And I mean, for this imaginative. My, my dad oh, I used think it's to, so sweet. My dad used to, after after we ate, my dad went upstairs and then he called, we saw the Christkind, we saw the Christkind. <laughs> and Christkind is basically baby Jesus. Yeah. Who brings the presents Yeah, here. baby Jesus brings presents here. So we <laughs> ran upstairs. We just, we ran. We ran upstairs and we looked out of the window. He was like, there, there it was, there it was. Do you see it? And we, of course, no, we don't. Where, where, where? Yeah, we had the two. And then off the sudden, my mom Santa. rang the bell. Yeah. Which means, hey, the Christkind was here. And so we ran down and the, the tree was like all lighted up and, and mm -hmm. the candles and everything. And it was just, oh. So we had that. Yeah. There was an, another thing that we always did on Christmas Eve was decorate the tree. Mm -hmm. So our tree was never decorated. We had it and it was I mean, up in the house, we but we never decorated until Christmas Eve. Sometimes we'd put the lights on before so we could have the nice lights mm -hmm. and stuff when we sit in the living room. But my family collected ornaments every year. And so every year we'd get a new or each of us would get a new ornament. Mm -hmm. And sometimes family would give you ornaments as well or like friends who live far away. Maybe we get another one this year. That'd be so cool. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I'm i so excited to like bring that tradition back like when we have kids because I think it's so special because when you go through the ornaments, you have so many memories then just from this one little thing. Mm -hmm. And so that was really nice. So that's something we always listen to. If you don't know this album, listen to it at Christmas. Harry Connick Jr., When My Heart Finds Christmas. It's a really old album, I think, from the 90s. Maybe... It's not that old. Yeah, for a lot of people, it's old. <laughs> but it's uh, it's the best Christmas album. It's so good. Um, so we would listen to that. We'd listen to Charlie Brown Christmas. We'd listen to that album. Um, so then, yeah, we'd go to sleep, and when we'd wake up in the morning, we also had a rule that we didn't get to open presents right away. We'd eat breakfast first. <laughs> yeah, we had a... That's and even, that's even, you have no, to sleep but and then you have to eat <laughs> breakfast and then eventually. But it was nice because you all cook together, yeah. you help each other, cooking in the kitchen. It was so much fun, blasting Christmas music. It was so fun. Damn. And, and then we all sat around the, the Christmas tree and how we did presents is we had a Santa hat. 
Okay. And it every year it changed. So one person was Santa, Santa in quotes mm-hmm. each year. And they handed out the presents. Okay. So I think how we do it here is mm-hmm. once you get a present, you're the next one to pick one right, someone, for the next yeah. person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we always had each year someone was designated as Santa and passed out the presents. And that was also really fun. Um, and usually within the days following or the days prior to Christmas, we would have like the big Steiner Christmas family. Mm. My dad's family is really, really big. And we used to have to rent out like dining halls, like mm. bigger than you've ever seen, like at country clubs and yeah. stuff. Because the family just didn't fit. We couldn't go to a restaurant. It was not possible. That's so insane. Yeah, it was really crazy. And they got smaller over the years because people would move away or, mm. you know. Yeah. But that was always really fun. All of like the cousins and stuff getting together. Let's but, yeah. take a quick break. And we're back uh, from the break. Uh, um, but it's funny that, I mean, it's basically the same thing. It's just all switched like mm-hmm. in times and days. Yeah. But it's technically the same thing. And yeah. I mean, Santa equals Christkind. Uh, Christkind is just like this magical f- thing yeah. that just appears, not with like a sled and reindeers flying. <laughs> so, but it's the same concept. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like Christmas. Me too. What I don't like necessarily is New Year's Eve. Yeah, and I don't like New Year's either. Because I, I mean, I like the idea of like starting fresh, but I... I but I also am of the opinion that you can technically start fresh any nah, day. Sure, you sure, know, sure. You don't have to wait until the sure. New Year. <laughs> sure. But, it, you know, it's still like this... A symbol. A symbol, right? Yeah. And But in the last couple of years, I, I grew to hate like fireworks and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. And also the, necess- the necessity to feel like or feel obligated to do something, like have a party or go to a party. Or oh, I've never felt obligated. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. It, but that kind of faded the last couple of years, which I like, and I couldn't care less, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, sure, it's nice to have people over to be with someone yeah. you like, um, but this year will be different anyways, so... The thing that's really that maybe other people who listen to this podcast can relate to um, what's really hard for me at Christmas is not being with my family because mm. not just because of our traditions, but and that's a big part of it because you miss those traditions, but you it's not really the tradition itself you yeah, miss. It's sure. doing it with your family. Yeah. And so that's really hard for me every year. And this will be my third Christmas here. Mm. Um, and. The first Christmas, we had actually planned to go home yeah. to the U.S. and spend Christmas there. And we actually planned it as a surprise. So very few people knew that we were coming. And I even, like, contacted my dad's boss to get him off of oh, work. Yeah. And it was a whole thing. There mm-hmm. was so much planning. And there was a snafu. That's a good Midwest word. There was a snafu with um, the airline and my ticket because the name was spelled wrong. And we couldn't change no, the last not, name. It was not spelled wrong. It was your old name on uh, it. It was my old name on there, yeah. Wow. Because we had someone else book it and accidentally he put the wrong thing. Yeah. Wow. Which was more our fault because I didn't, I should have told him. Yeah, and then we couldn't go. And then we couldn't go because the airline wouldn't just change the name, which was outrageous. Yeah. Um. So then we couldn't go. And then the next year we decided just to stay here anyways. Yep. And this year, I, I actually feel a little less lonely this year, strangely, but I think it's because I know that I can't go anyways. Mm. So I can't fly there. They can't fly here. And I, like, it's not allowed. Yeah. So I think that actually kind of helps me to feel less um, lonely. But Christmas is hard for me here, I have to say. There, I think every Christmas I've cried at least once, mm. probably because I just I miss them so much. The thing I... is, I want to. I always wanted to spend Christmas mm-hmm. in the U.S. Not only because of the traditions, but also because with your family and and like seeing all of the things you do usually. Yeah. But also to be not home. Yeah. To have lot the classic Christmas I've had for thirty years now. Yeah. Which again I don't mind, but at the same time it. It gets a little old, and I'm, that's why I'm super glad that this mm-hmm. year will be different. And next year can look e- either we're in the US or we're here again, and your family's here, or mm-hmm. we're somewhere completely different. And I can look forward to something different again. But, yeah. 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 
But I mean, my dad has this lovely idea, which I hope is possible and works. But his idea is that next Christmas we all spend together in Switzerland because uh, my dad and my mom would then, and probably my mom's boyfriend would fly over Instad. here. And then Instad. we would go, we would mm. probably drive there. We could drive there. And my brother and his wife, Naomi, they live in Holland. And so they could also very easily drive there with, with the train with the train and their little baby. Mm. Um, in Stad. Mm -hmm. That would be nice. So we're hoping that that works next year, but... If not, I would love to go back to the U.S. again for the for the holidays. Yeah. Um, since this is our last episode this year, technically, so 2020, um, we thought we also do like a little, like, uh, I don't know, look back or like mm -hmm. a, a... But we wanted to do like a positive look back at the year because right. I think there's a lot of, obviously, there I know there's a lot of negative about this last year. And I think... That it's also good to look at the positives because there were a lot of positives this year, mm -hmm. despite it being an insane year. And I mean, there are a shit ton of negatives, but I think it's good to focus on, like, yeah. at least in our lives, what was good and what yeah. we what yeah. stood out to us in this year as as a good thing. You want to start? Uh, let me see. I mean, the one, the first thing that comes to my mind is comps comps comes comps. to my mind is that uh, Voithi and I became an aunt and uncle. My brother and his wife had a baby. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> my brother and his wife had their first baby, it's, and it's the first grandkid for my parents. It's my first nephew. Mm -hmm. um, That's Haven't exciting. gotten to meet him yet, which is the downside, but because he was born in October. Um, but that's just been so joyous to, like get pictures and yeah, videos of no, him and get so to cute. talk on the you know on skype with them and ugh, it's fabulous yeah so that's like my ultimate highlight for the year that's really good becoming that's an aunt good, that's a good highlight do you have like an uh, a highlight that stands out to you the most because i have other things too but that's i mean no out. i mean uh, to be honest one of the big best things this year was the birthday party we had we luckily that was really was nice was able like it was the perfect weather. We were sitting outside until eleven at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're summer babies. So um, end of August. We had friends over. We we socially distanced. Um, we had the best night and it was super cool. We literally were able. The day was so nice that we were able to sit outside from ten in the morning yeah. until like eleven thirty at night or yeah. something. And people just came by whenever they had time and yeah. and felt like it. And it was such a nice day. It was really nice. And even though we we planned like a bigger thing, it was just I don't know. This year, I think show shows you somehow. At least I think that's that's my thing. That what's really important, and it's mm -hmm. just family, friends, and just the the holding together in this situation. Even though you can't be together as much, you can't do that yeah. many things. You can't just meet up or or have like game nights or whatever. Um, there are ways to still feel connected and do things together and i mean in summertime we we hiked we had friends over uh we went outside a lot with friends for well, walks and the and other stuff. thing too is you you get creative or at right. least we did we we ended up having game nights over skype with right. some friends and that was super fun and we did that multiple times mm -hmm. and, we and i think that's just again. like a really nice way to be together without yeah. being together yeah i agree and it's just i don't know it uh, this year really showed me what what's important in life yeah. and um i don't know put some things in perspective and and business was really good too mm -hmm. so yeah I, I started a new job this year you started a new which job. is also a very lucky thing to be able to do in this year right, right so and it's a great job which is just an extra bonus i mean literally the best job i've ever had you're with the best boss i've ever had scraping skunks from the street right yeah yeah <laughs> But it's it's a great it is a great job and I feel very very thankful and lucky to be there, mm. and that's so that's another positive for me this year is a, yeah, a we, good I mean, job. I think it, it's you was uh, to be honest it was short it felt short even felt though really I'm short. super exhausted and I can't wait for the the vacation to start mm -hmm. soon. But I had so many fun gigs. We started the rehearsal room sessions, which you can find on YouTube. Um, Please check them out. They're super cool. And yours is coming up soon. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, I don't know, we had so much fun just trying new things and, and, and I was able to work. We had a lot of cool projects. Um, I did a really cool project with colleagues of mine mm-hmm. and I don't know, I, it was a really good year and I'm, I'm looking positively towards the next year in a lot of ways. I, I mean, have... another way that it was a good year, at least from my perspective, was I I personally feel like I have had a lot of growth, like in my um, self image, oh, in yeah. my anxiety, in <laughs> and my... I think you shrunk a little bit this you think year. So? Yeah, I think got so. Got shorter. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But just like with anxiety and with learning how to kind of control it a little better, and I understand my own anxiety a lot better than I did last mm-hmm. year. And also with like my the self image thing, I think it's really big for me because we've talked about this before mm-hmm. on the podcast. But mm-hmm. just briefly, I I decided in March, basically with the first lockdown, that I would stop wearing makeup, and I have not put on a single ounce of makeup since March, right? Which is insane. And I finally can look at you. <laughs> No, but as someone who would always, I never wore too much, but as someone who would always put something on, like eyeliner and eyebrow stuff, I wouldn't leave the house without doing mm. even that small little thing. I wouldn't leave the house. You looked like a raccoon. I did not. It was not that bad. It was it was subtle, but it was. I needed it. I yeah. felt like I needed it to look pretty. And that's also been really nice to kind of just be so, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's freeing. It's the same for me. I finally I started with walking out without pants. Uh, you don't need pants. And you also, Wolfgang, you forgot the most important thing. What? You finally started wiping your anus after you poop. <laughs> Danielle, <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. It's true, but it has nothing to do with this year. <laughs> but it started this year. The thing is that I always thought that the toilet paper <laughs> is just for cleaning your nose. I'd or your vagina. Put... You always thought it was like a woman's thing. Right. I never <laughs> put two and two together. And yeah, I thought that's the, that's why you wear underwear. Yeah, but I know? have to say it smells a lot better when we're sitting together now because I'm not smelling the poop, yeah. leftover that's poop on your That's what underneath. my work colleague said too. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm glad that it's it's affecting everybody in a yeah. good way. Nah, but I don't know. I, I agree too. And I don't know with all the anxiety and stuff we talked. I mean, we talked about that in a lot of episodes already. Mm-hmm. Um, it, going through anxiety and especially health anxiety and stuff, learning a lot before this whole pandemic started, yeah. I think helped me a lot to deal with the whole thing. And also try to always, because this it's a scary time uh, with all the uncertainty when we can go back to normal, then with the vaccine. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's amazing that they got that vaccine done in such a short amount of time, but there has been put a lot of money and the best brains into that vaccine. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's a great effort if you think about that. Um, and it might help us to go back to a normal again where we can finally drop the masks and hug each other again, yeah. stuff like that. But still, I mean, it's uncertain. You do, Now they're basically testing it on people um, and hopefully it works and hopefully there are no serious um, um, problems with the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but it's still there are a lot of fears connected to that, and I think dealing with my anxiety prior to the whole uh, pandemic helped me a lot to keep my head over water and not fall into that, you know, circle of mm-hmm. of, of of anxiety, fear, and depression. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that this year it's really important. It's always important, but I think especially this year, I urge everybody to. Take a few minutes to think about the things that they're grateful for this right, year. Right. Because there is there is a lot, undoubtedly, there is a lot of negative this year. A lot of people have lost people. And yeah. for anyone that has lost people to this horrible yeah. virus or even who lost somebody out who who didn't die from the virus but for something else and you couldn't go be there with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, my heart sincerely goes out to you because I cannot imagine how hard that is. But with all of the shit that happened this year, I think it's really, really important to take a minute to think about the things that you're grateful for. And yeah. this might sound stupid, but if you haven't seen the show Big Mouth, <laughs> it is an animated series on Netflix written by Nick Kroll and his friend Andrew... Uh, I don't know. Goldberg. Goldberg. Andrew Goldberg. Yeah. Um, 
it's mostly about it starts out as being like about puberty age yeah. and, and yeah. all of that and it's really funny and dirty and fabulous but it's also super accurate and this newest season insanely spoke to me because they're talking more about anxiety mm-hmm. the in anxiety, the new season what was it? it was a mosquito, mosquito anxiety, they, mosquito, yeah. they basically compare anxiety to a mosquito and this little mosquito flies around your head and tells you all these negative thoughts and all mm-hmm. of these bad things mm-hmm. and the thing that that then helped people overcome the anxiety mosquito was the gratitude mm, the gratitude yeah. which is a toad who eats the mosquitoes mm. because every time you say something that you're grateful for it takes a little bit of that anxiety yeah, away yeah. and i think it's such a lovely representation to just think about so my all of this to say if you haven't watched it you really should but also find yourself a gratitude <laughs> Whether it's an right, actual right. like stuffed animal or something of a toad or if it's just in your head, remind yourself of the things that were good this year I and think, that you should be grateful right, for. Right. I think the underlining message here is that stop being on Facebook, stop obsessing about mm-hmm. opinions, whatever your opinion might be. Again, we are voicing our opinion in here. If our, your opinion is different in a way, then that's fine. But I don't know, try to focus more on the positivity and, and being grateful for something and I mean, there are people who lost someone. There are people fighting right now yeah. for for their lives who are overworking themselves because they can't they can't just take a vacation day because they have to be there. Stuff like that, and just t- take a step back and say thank you for whatever yeah. and and let this and even write them down, write things down, right. and be able to like look at it the next couple of days and just say, "Hey, this year was actually there were some really good yeah. things that happened this yeah. year." And even if not that much actually happened this year for you, you can still have so much that you're grateful for: right. family, friends, a house to live in, a roof over your head, warmth, yeah. anything that you're grateful for. Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to say before we end. Mm-hmm is that I'm also super proud of the two of us this year because I think it's um, a tough year for a lot of couples with all of the quarantining, with all of the, you yeah. you spend a lot of time together. And I think that we've handled it super beautifully, yeah, actually. Yeah, we've probably fought less this year than we have in previous years. Mm-hmm. We've, I mean, that's also help from therapy. Um, but... We also didn't go to therapy that much this year because of yeah. the virus. Yeah. But I think we're really starting to communicate a lot better with each other and to kind of like learn from each other. And because I'm suppressing yes, anger. waiting for something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, yeah. I am really super proud of us looking back at this year and some of the struggles that both of us faced individually, but also as a couple. I think that we handled it really well and yeah, I think so too. that we're much stronger for so too. everything that happened this year. Yeah, thank you for listening, everybody. Um, and please, please, if you like the podcast, if you only, even if you only listen to one episode, if you like this episode, share the episode either in your stories on Instagram or on Facebook or just with friends and family. Say, hey, this is a cool thing. Maybe you'd like this. Right. Um, or subscribe. We really, really would appreciate it if you could subscribe to us either on Apple Podcasts or Google or wherever you Spotify. listen to your podcasts. Right. Um, and yeah, please share. It, it really, really helps us when you share the podcast. And lastly, I just wanted to, if you feel like sharing it, uh, hit us up on our Instagrams um, and just share with us how you celebrate Christmas. What yeah, your, your traditions. What your traditions are and maybe how they are different this year. And also, please share your favorite Christmas movies because I want to watch some more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's it. Then Merry Christmas again. Merry and Christmas. we'll hear you next year or you will hear us next year yes you will bye bye oh i just saw santa that was my penis <laughs> <laughs>